Uh, my name is Joseph Rowe. My final major project was to produce and direct a live music show late with Miskin. So the roles I undertook for the production was the uh, firstly the role of a producer. Um, as a producer, it would give me the creative c control to uh, have the show the way I kind of uh, would would be with my vision. This uh, includes setting up uh, what cameras would go where, what piece of equipment would be used, uh, who would be on what cameras, what team I could hire, and uh, what team would work for me, um, would do what. With that as well, it uh, gave me the creative control to actually manage a team. Uh, I've managed smaller teams in the past, but I've never managed a team of uh, this size. I think we had um, uh, eight people in total uh, on the on the uh, media team, so I've never really managed a team of that size. So I wanted to challenge myself and see if I could I could I could do that successfully, which I feel I did. Uh, as well as that, I undertook the role of a director. This would give me the creative freedom to kind of work with talent and actually. Uh, kind of um, work with the cameras as well to actually um, see what would go where and uh, who would do what on the night, so what cameras would look at who, uh, how I would work with talent to see how they would react to camera and uh, kind of see how the whole process would um, work. Why I'd done this is because I've never really directed um, musicians to camera before. Uh, my background is in advertising and uh, making promotional videos, that's my kind of background. So to challenge myself I kind of uh, wanted to push myself a little bit and see if I could direct people that have never worked with cameras before and people and performers to see if they could uh, work to camera and vice versa to see if cameras could work to performers. The codes conventions of uh, live music shows use a range of different uh, lights and uh, costumes to kind of express um, a means of talent. With a live music show, there's no way to express um, yourself outside the music. For example, a music video would use images on screen to kind of uh, convey a message. Uh, live music performances um, use a different way of um, directing a live performance. Uh, for example, in when uh, Storms at the Brit Awards came out on a uh, police car, uh, there was no way to express um, express his vision apart from coming out on a police car. S um, so, so that's kind of how it's kind of working to how a piece how talent would express themselves in a confined oh, space. Right. The kind of closing conventions that I put into my final wage project was how talent would express themselves. A lot of these guys that are um, in these bands, I've never really done anything um, outside of uh, Miskin before, and they've never really been shot before. So, how to uh, give them personality? For example, like I said before. Um, with the different costumes that would be using, different lights that being using. The example that we used was with uh, Sadgasm. Uh, they had the, uh, the ha ha which was a metally band, so they kind of had the um, reds and the dark colours in their costume and they had red lighting in their themes kind of to express and show who they are through that means. Uh, my pre-production challenges were trying to find crew. I think I spent a lot of time trying to figure out who, who I'd want to do what and uh, who I'd want on my team to actually come board for the project because it wasn't an easy project. It was a uh, um, six day shoot, uh, sometimes 12 hour days and a lot of people didn't want to do that. So trying to find um, guys to come in and willing to do that and also who could have that kind of um, kind of had that schedule um, where they would have them days free. Production challenge that we had a big thing was um, timing and working with talent. Uh, timing on call sheets, a lot of the time would be asked, uh, some of the time we would be come in when the call sheets wouldn't um, tell us to. Uh, this means that I had to uh, respect people's decisions outside of college. For example, if someone had uh, booked working for that day or they'd booked uh, doctor's appointments for that day or, or, or whatnot, uh, I would have to respect that and find people to fill their shoes just for rehearsals. Uh, as well as um, that, working with talent was a big thing as well. A lot of these uh, talent had never worked to camera before, so they kind of saw us as uh, the bad guys, kind of like coming in, uh, coming and shaking up their whole systems, kind of getting them relaxed and working with them. As it was a big challenge that we had for the whole for the whole production stage. And finally, pre-production uh, time management was a massive thing that um, I did struggle with. Um, I should have educated myself in my job job role uh, prior to the event and uh, now it's kind of hitting me that um, what challenges um, I should have um, fought for prior uh, to doing the event that are now smacking me in the face or, or did smack me in the face in, in post-production. Uh, I should have um, took the time to educate myself in my job role to understand time management, uh, what crew needed, what, what my responsibilities as a producer director was and that's something that I didn't do and that was a massive problem for me. Uh, talent problems, a big thing was, uh, we had two big things. 
Uh, firstly, uh, working talent to camera. Um, a big problem that we had is, like I said before, a lot of talent hadn't worked with any camera crew before, so they kind of um, it was kind of stepping, taking a big step out of the comfort zone to kind of relax in them, kind of seeing how they could give the best performance working to the camera. Uh, the biggest way I would do that is trying to relax them into the song. Kind of uh, don't don't give them a microphone stand because they'll hide behind it. Um, don't let them face away from the camera because they'll keep facing away from the camera and uh, also letting you know where the cameras are so if in doubt just look at that camera, relax, get into it and kind of rep in it so it kind of becomes more natural and, and it's not really false. As well as that, um, scheduling problems with talent, a lot of the get us, we had some sets that would get pulled um, un right, under their, right under our feet for no reason and we had to re, re for example, uh, one of the lead singers for Mamma Mia um, called, uh, was sick in hospital, nothing like we can do about it, but we now had to refocus, see okay, who's now the lead singer, who do we focus on and get my guys set, for example, camera three, sniper rig, who's he looking at, camera two with a dolly, who they're looking at, camera one, who they're roaming between and, and so on and so on. So we used four cameras, we used three Blackmagic Studios, uh, one was on a sniper rig, that was camera three on the main stage, one was on a um, dolly rig, that was uh, camera two by the stage, and one was on a locked off tripod, that was the Roman camera, camera one. Uh, they all had the standard 14 to 114 millimeter lens, uh, all on, so for example the tripod, that was a locked off tripod, that would roam in and out, uh, but get, getting this different close ups between the main stage and the acoustic stage. Um, the dolly would go, um, would run along the uh, main stage and getting uh, uh, getting different uh, medium and close ups of the act so the talent could uh, work into the camera for example we were rock you we had a lot of the guys pointing at the camera getting into the into the music and um, shouting at the camera and so shouting at the audience there uh, basically as well as that camera free with a sniper rig on the main stage we um, was a roaming camera that we could um, get right up into the uh, personal space of the talent to uh, kind of immerse the audience further uh, as well as, as well as that uh, each um, camera rig had uh, comms that were to be wired back to the communications desk we had problems with that as well because uh, that wasn't working um, so we swapped to uh, me and my floor manager having uh, two radios that was also being used with two radios that was uh, if anything went wrong we could um, deal with that on the night as well as that we used a Panasonic camera to look down to the drum rig that was an unmanned camera that just sat there and looked straight down and fed back to the uh, TriCaster as well the TriCaster uh, let us swap between them four cameras as well as that it let us run the um, visual uh, the visual effects as in the poster for the intermissions as well as that it let us run the um, the credits at the end that were brought in and introduced. Um, as well as that we used a uh, backup mic which was the Rode mic and a zoom which the mic fed into. Lighting, so the way that the lighting set up it is theatre lighting set up to a rock concert performance. Uh, this in turn is very harsh in our uh, sensors on our um, irises and uh, so sometimes it make very harsh um, lighting coming to the camera. Uh, this is good because uh, some um, we dealt with this because some acts would kind of give this kind of a holy effect to some acts and kind of make them dominant on stage. But others it would just mess with our um, mess with our uh, exposure and just make the whole screen go white, which is not something that we wanted. So we had eight, seven or eight acts performing. We had a uh, uh, numb that was a rock group. We had uh, sadgasm that was a heavy metal group. Sockwitch was another rock group. OG Kush was a, which is a rap hip hop group. Um, Sweet Platinum Twist, which was a um, garage group, um, had Fruit Loops, which was a pop band, and um, Loose Movement, which was another uh, classic rock band, so seven in total. A kind of pacing, uh, one thing we did a lot was uh, with the slower uh, songs, so for example, uh, Fruit Loops played um, a Rihanna song, I uh, can't remember the name, um, but uh, on the uh, acoustic stage so what we did with that is we uh, gave a lot slower pans, a lot slower um, kind of movement of the camera, uh, a lot more locked off shots so you get focus on the uh, talent so the talent's not moving around. And also on the bigger acts like uh, we had a uh, Sadgasm which is a heavy heavy metal thing, we had a lot of fast movement so uh, Ben on the sniper rig was getting up 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 into the uh, main singer's personal space. The dolly rig was moving a lot quicker. 
the transition and zooms were a lot quicker and a lot uh, snappier to kind of keep the uh, upbeat and, and the pacing and the rhythm going, as well as that. Um, same with the pace, so, so different kind of camera movements, for, for example. Um, OG Kush, they would come in from the back of the stage to kind of move in that quickly, give them dynamic um, cuts where we had a bit where we had a guitar solo in OG Kush, so they're using the crossfades, so we can sew two different bits of the stage at once, which are the main singers and the guitars. So, kind of dip, keeping the pacing and kind of controlling the way that the, uh, the, the whole concert flowed. So the main way that we edited the project is because it was running on the TriCaster, it was edited live. Um, myself and Alex would use uh, just normal cuts, so we cut something, or we'd use a lot of smoother fades or crossfades. The crossfades let us um, see two different parts of uh, something at the same time, we've got a lot slower fades, so the audience is uh, immersed more into what's going on on not one side of the stage, but both sides of the stage. As well as that, the fade's going to give a lot more smoother transition, kind of a, a lot more subtle as well. As well as the um, normal jump cut, just let the um, just let the talent flow. The overall product uh, is kind of a mixed bag. Uh, how the show finally came out, I think I'm happy with. I'm happy with all the uh, visual side of it. So all the, all the shots, I think, look beautiful, and the shots look nice. The sound, on the other hand, is something that we couldn't really control, and something that was out of our kind of. Uh, Something was out of our control and something that we didn't really have any control over, but um, it still sits with me and is kind of like something that still kicks me in the teeth uh, now and again about how, this, how I didn't want the, how the sound didn't come out the way I wanted it to come out. If I could go back, I would look up into the, um, I'd research the roles a lot more um, carefully. So what my job description as a director producer actually was and uh, what everyone's job description actually was. So what, at the end of the day, what did they have to do? Uh, that's something that I didn't really look up uh, enough and something that um, I should have looked into. So for example, um, my f uh, first AD, uh, I should have looked up into actually what the roles and responsibilities are to a first AD. He wasn't doing them roles, let me educate him in them roles. So he was supposed to do the call sheets, let me educate him on how to do call sheets, why he should do them. Um, as a director myself, as a producer, um, Making sure everyone's uh, making sure all the paperwork's there on time, so all the uh, production paperwork's there on time. Um, it wasn't, and uh, that was really my fault. I should have uh, done that. That was my job. I wasn't edu I didn't educate myself on how to do that job. Uh, the fact that as a director, I should have sat in on the editing session. Um, I didn't know that. I should have, that's my fault. I should have educated myself. Um, with this experience of kind of uh, time management, I think time management something that was really slacking throughout the whole project. Um, kind of managing what we should do in a certain amount of time and what we can do in a certain amount of time. So for example, um, we had three days to rehearse the whole show. Um, I, we, I should have said, okay, day one we're getting this done, day two we're getting this done, day three we're getting this done. Um, I should have worked with um, the musical directors a lot more to say, okay, day one, book X, Y and Z are performing, day two, A, B and C are performing. Day three, E, G, and F are performing. Um, that and um, and and so on and so on. So we can kind of work towards and so kind of because uh, I kind of felt like I took a back seat in the kind of rehearsal stage. So I should have been more up up for it, more kind of saying, okay, this is what's happening, this is how it's going to happen, and not saying kind of okay, kind of learning because it was a learning curve for me. So kind of figuring out what talent would do what. It was I was learning. I've never worked with talent before. As uh, so a kind of um, kind of managing my time a lot better to see also what I can get done that time, but also not what my team should be doing in that time. So yeah, so time management is something that I really wish I could change.